Hello, in this video I would like to show you the new column filter feature which we've added to the program. This feature will allow you to uh, filter a list directly using simply any of the columns that are displayed on the screen. Firstly, before we start, I would like you to add a new button to your toolbar which will uh, simplify these pro uh, this process quite a lot. Um, right click on the toolbar at the top and go to customize toolbars. Then in the buttons tab at the top, simply type in filter and you'll see an enable column filters op uh, option add it to the toolbar and I'm going to move it up here and click on OK. So I've just added this new uh, column filter button. I'll explain what it does in a second. The new feature allows you to filter on any non-intraday column in the program, be it that a numerical column, a date column or a text column. The reason why you cannot filter on intraday columns like mid prices is that a lot of these columns change too fast for uh, the uh, system to be able to process the filter quickly enough. So in order to activate a filter on a particular column, it's very simple. You either right click on the column heading and select add column filter or you press with the middle mouse button or the mouse wheel on the column that you wish to filter. Once you uh, activate the filter, the heading will change color to remind you that you've, uh, you're now filtering on this particular column. Now the first one I've done is a capitalization column. Uh, it's a numerical column, uh, therefore you have to simply enter a minimum uh, or a maximum value or both. In order to simplify things uh, it will show you what the smallest and largest value in the list that you're currently viewing. At the moment I'm viewing a list of the entire London Stock Exchange list. The smallest market cap, the smallest market cap is zero uh, and the largest market cap I have is 170 billion. You, If you want to enter a minimum value you took uh, you uh, tick minimum value and enter a number so a hundred million pounds and a maximum value if you want it you tick it and you enter again a value that you wish to use uh, you don't have to use both if you don't use a minimum value it will simply be anything below 50,000 or if you don't use a maximum value it'll just be anything above a hundred there's an extra option uh, here called uh, highest 20 items only or lowest 20 items only. Because the filter here uh, has uh, resulted in more than 20 results, if I'm only interested in the top results, I can tick this and no matter how many results this range gives me, I will only see the top 20 or the top 30. Or the top 10. Alternatively you can change this to lowest and you'll only see the lowest 10, 20, 30, whichever value you enter. If you don't use it you'll see every share between 100 and 50,000 million market cap. Click on OK and the filter is now active. We can see the change in color of the heading and we can see now that we have 860 shares in the LSE list uh, within the range that we entered. The other columns work uh, similarly. The date, if you uh, try and set a filter on a date column, in this case is a next year end date, it will work just like with a numerical value but instead of a number there's a date. So again we can set uh, the lowest of so the first date to include and the last date to include, say for example, we want uh, shares that are going to um, finish their year in the next couple of months. So I'll start from the 1st of December 2016 and end the 31st of January 2017. And same as before, we can show the latest 20 items only or the earliest 20 items only. If we uncheck this, we go back to showing every result between the 1st of December and the 31st of January. 
again we click on OK and now both filters are active so we can we only showing the market cap filtered between 150,000 million pounds and a year end between the 1st of December 2016 and the 31st of January 2017 and now the last column here is a sector column if we try and filter by a sector column we get this dialog box here we will have a list of options in this case every single sector that's available in the program and we can either <clears throat> tick them all untick them all or check which ones we actually uh, want to include so if i select untick all i can only can tick just the first five click on ok and now i only have shares within the selected sectors the button which I got you to, to add to the toolbar before is uh, this one here at the top and it will allow you to enable and disable the entire filter. So if we press it, now the t filter is disabled and we can see the entire London Stock Exchange list. If you click it again, the three column filters which we added are now active and we can only see the filtered results. So you can easily toggle between the uh, filtered and unfiltered state using this button. The filter itself is linked to the table you're using so at the moment if you see at the bottom here I'm using table 10 so this uh, this table will allow me to filter uh, by the columns I just added. If I change the list with the filter still active for example going to the FTSE 350 list the filter will also be active on the new list I can then toggle the filter on and off as normal you can enable and disable individual columns if you right click on the heading of a column you can go to disable column filter and that will only keep the first two columns active while ignoring the sector filter you can right click again to enable it and it'll be filtered again by the way we selected it. The other option is to delete the column filter. All options which we set up before, so for the, uh, um, the, the sector selection we made before, will be removed entirely. We delete the column filter and now the button at the top will only enable and disable the two column filters that are remaining. There is one more column type that you can filter by and that is just a pure text column. So for example, if we right click on the name column heading and select add column filter, this allows us to do a pure text search. So if I type in the word mining, it will find all the shares uh, within the uh, list that I'm viewing that have the word mining in them. The tick box here remove items containing uh, containing this uh, text if I tick this it will show me everything except those shares with the ne uh, with mining in their name instead of only the shares with the word mining in their name uh, word search allows us to um, search for specific keywords if for example I search for min it will find me everything with the letters M I N in for example dominoes but if I tick word search, it will only find the shares with the specific word min in, which of which there are none at the moment. Now, everything I've shown you up to now is relevant for all three vers versions of ShareScope Gold Plus and Pro. Uh, for ShareScope Plus and Pro customers, you are able to app apply these filters to uh, share script columns, albeit only those that don't update on an intraday basis. Now before I end this video I'm going to show you uh, a quick practical application of this so I'm going to delete all the column filters and I'm going to actually remove all the columns. I'm going to create here a simple dividend yield filter so I'm going to add a forecast dividend yield and a historical dividend yield and I'm then going to add a dividend cover column click on OK and now I can set my limits to all three I will right click go to add column filter I'm going to 
set a minimum value of 5, no maximum. I'm going to set a minimum value of 5 here as well, no maximum for my dividend yields. And I want to make sure that my dividend cover is at least 2. And here we have it. All the shares in the FTSE 350 that have both a historical and a forecast yield of at least 5% and a dividend cover of at least 2. I can now easily switch between one list and another, go and see uh, the entire LSE shares list and the filter will still apply. When I'm done, I press this button and I can go back to the full list. I'm going to be doing more videos on uh, this feature as there are things that I have not discussed in this video. I will be showing you more examples, but for now, thank you for listening and goodbye.